What's up friends, my name is Nordic Rapid, and in this video I will explain you exactly how to beat Dark Souls with those and only sorceries. Now the rules of this run is simple. First, we need to deal damage only by using sorceries, nothing else. Second, if we do deal damage by using something else than sorceries, then we need to kill ourselves the fastest way possible to reset the area. And third rule is that we need to kill every boss in this game. That's it, that's simple. So without further ado, let's begin. We start the game like always. We wake up in our little dungeon cell, pick up the key, our estus and the weapons. Then we encounter our first boss fight, the Asylum Demon, who's a total pushover. After the easy kill, we pick up our flight tickets and head straight to Lordran. From Firelink Shrine, we run to New London Ruins and buy some extra soul arrows from Rickard of Windheim for 2000 souls. From the character selection, I recommend to choose Master Key for your starting gift, as it allows you to have early access to the Valley of the Drakes, from where we head towards Dark Group Basin to get our Grass Crest Shield. On our way stands only one Black Knight, which should be easy enough to parry, as clear you can see. After a while, I gave up my endless fight with this guy, pick up my shield and run towards safety. You need to notice that in order to use the shield, you need to have 10 strength, which of course the starting glass do not have. I also recommend to pick up the red hairstone ring if you're comfortable enough to use it. When I got everything I wanted, it was time to run through the forest to Undead Paris. I grabbed one Firekeeper's soul from the altar to boost my estus, picked up a basement key and a mystery key and opened the elevator shortcut to Firelink. Now let's head towards Undead Burke. Remember to get the residence key from the Undead Merchant so we can free Griggs and buy some new spells. I recommend to buy the key instead of killing him. After getting my ass kicked more than once, I finally got to the boss, the Taurus Demon. I decided to fight fair and square with this guy, so I didn't cheese him. A good hit to family jewels puts even this size beast on his knees, and victory was mine. Now, let's use the basement key to get to the lower Undead Burg, and just in case, open the shortcut from the bonfire in Undead Burg. Then comes the dogs. There is a good way of cheesing them by hiding behind this fire. Dogs will run straight into it. Now it's time to free Griggs and send him to Firelink. At this point you can decide either to fight with the Capra Demon or run through the waterway to open the shortcut to Firelink as I did. To make things easier for you, buy some heavy soul arrows and level up if you can and head towards Gargoyles. The heavy arrows deal some nice damage but are quite slow, so learn the windows where you can actually shoot them. The Gargoyles are down without even breaking a sweat and we ring the first bell of awakening. Now back to Firelink to buy some spells. At this point, you should have 2x Solar Rows, Heavy Solar Row, Grey Solar Row, and Attunement 16 to have 4 spells slots available. The rest of the levels mostly goes to Intelligence, though a few levels of Vitality and Endurance do not hurt you. Okay, let's go back to the Lower Burg to face the Capra Demon. The boss itself is not that difficult, but man, the fucking dogs. I recommend to run up the stairs so Capra can't reach you, and using faster spells to deal with the dogs as quick as you can, so then you can actually face Capra Demon one on one. Capra's attacks are slow and well readable, so you have plenty of time to cast heavy arrows that deal nice amount of damage. After the fun, we have two options again. Visit the sewers and fight Gaping Dragon, or go through Blight Town to Quillac and ring the second bell of awakening. I chose the first option. You know, I actually got lost in sewers and even got cursed once. Luckily, the undead female merchants saw some virgin stones and I was as good as new. Before reaching the boss, you should try to remember to kill this channeler, otherwise he's going to make your life miserable. The boss itself was not a pushover. I had few painfully long fights and some questionable bullshit moments. I completely forgot the existence of the Fab Ring, so I went to free and kill Lordrek to obtain it. I don't think the Fab Ring actually made a difference, but I managed to slay the beast this time. With the souls I got from Gaping, I could buy myself the Bellowing Dragon Grass Ring from Grix, which boosts magic damage. If you can, I definitely recommend buying the ring earlier. With my rings equipped and pocket full of spells, it was time to ring the second bell of awakening. Willak was quite easy as a fight, but she can take some hits, so try to shoot her human part, for some extra damage and stagger. To Sen's fortress we go. From here, we need to free Big Hat Logan for better spells, and also his questline which in the end gives us really good catalyst. Turn the boulder counterclockwise once and wait for a few rounds for the boss to kill the snake. With our master key, Logan is free once again. For some reason, I managed to go all the way to the top of the sense fortress without dying and I found myself against the iron golem. Now I don't know if the fight itself is difficult, but what the fuck is this? 
After the first defeat, the difficulties began, and Sense Fortress reminded me why I hate running through it so fucking much. It took too long to even get to the boss again, and because of this shit, I had to do it unnecessary many times. When I finally claimed my victory, I had to go back to Firelink to buy some spells from our new friend Logan. We need to have two spells from Logan. First, Homing Solmas, and the second, the Soul Spear. The Soul Spear is quite expensive, so I decided to buy the Homing Solmas and Great Heavy Arrow just in case. Before facing the terrors of Sense Fortress once more to get to Honor Londo, I went back to the Asylum to face the remaining demon and getting Peculiar Doll from my cell. I recommend doing this now, so you have access to Painted Pearl while in Anna Londo, and also to get some souls, so you can buy the Soul Spear before facing the Mighty Duo. You probably need to pop few boss souls to actually get the 40k, so you can buy the Soul Spear. Pop few more souls to level up your intelligence to the 36, uh, so you can actually use the Soul Spear. After a few more attempts in Sense Fortress, I managed to fly over the Mighty Wall to the City of the Gods. Usually these assassins are pain in the ass, but with the homing solmas, balancing on top of these pillars while dealing with the essences was not a difficult task. Just cast your spell and enjoy. There's no point of dealing with these gargoyles, so I don't recommend wasting any time with them. Unless you need souls and or you wanna level up. I actually died to this gargoyle, which is a little bit embarrassing. Come on, look at these poor attempts. I think I never had this much trouble dealing with these archers and getting into the castle before. I died like three, maybe four times? I know you can bait this one guy, but for some reason I was scared as shit and tried to play safe. Luckily, finally got into the castle and the safety of the bonfire. Now, there's nothing in the castle for you, so just skip the castle and run straight to ONS. It is time to prepare for trouble and make it double, as this fight can be pain in the ass depending on your RNG, but usually you have a lot of windows for casting your spells. Soul Spears deal nice amount of damage, and if you are comfortable enough to use RTSR, you can do even better. Defeat Onstein first and then just cheese the shit out of the small by hiding behind these pillars. And that's it, another door is done. Time to acquire the Lord Vessel and warp the hell out of here. Now, in order to complete Logan's questline and acquire the better catalyst, we need to buy every spell from him. At the moment he does not sell all the spells, but I decided to buy at least what he had. And the next location for Logan should be in Duke's archives. So, at this point, you should go there to continue his questline. Before we go to the Duke's archives, first go and free Dusk of Ulasil. Kill the Hydra, kill the Golem, and say yes to her request, and she will place her summoning sign. You need to summon her once in order to gain the loot from where the portal appears, so you can acquire her crown. Before you leave, remember to buy the cast light spell from Dusk, you might need it later. Now into archives, remember to kill the crystal golem or the broken pendant so you can access the DLC. Okay, at this point I need to tell something. When you will encounter Seed for the first time and die a scripted death, you will wake up in the dungeon where also Logan is in prison, and you need to free him to continue his questline. Since the rule of this run was to not deal damage by any other way than using sorceries, we will face a problem. The little cell where you wake up is guarded by this snake man, who has the key to open the cage, so you can actually get away from the cage. I think he dies from a single hit even with your bare fists, but for some reason you can't harm him with spells, so you will be stuck in the prison forever. Luckily, there is a way around it. We can perform the Duke skip, so we don't need to face see it the first time. First, you need to get to the ledge of the elevator where you need to roll in a specific point to that ledge over there. It took me one and a half hour to do this because I'm no means of a pro at this game and I have never before done the skip. But I managed to do it and now we can finish the game without dealing damage any other way than sorceries. Great, right? Well, because we did the skip, we can't free Logan anymore, so we can't get the best catalyst of the game or better spells from him. Wiki told me that if you defeat Seed, Logan should appear in the library, but at least in my case he did not. I tried to defeat Seed, but with my damage it wasn't worth it. Maybe I could have done it, but I didn't have the patience for it. By the way, if you have liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe and leave a comment. So we have one option for better spells anymore, 
and that is to go to the DLC to get the dark spells. There's two spells you need to get, Dark Orb and Dark Beat, to get the spells you need to defeat Artorias. Both Sanctuary Guardian and Artorias can be difficult fights, because you really don't have a lot of windows to cast lower spells that will deal better damage. With the Guardian, the opportunities are mostly after his flying dash attacks, but also after the 4 hit combo, if you are not too close to him. Homing Solmas is the key spell for this fight. With Artorias, the case is pretty much the same. After his dash attacks, you have plenty of time to cast spells. Also, remember to take advantage when he is charging up or buffing or whatever the hell he is doing. Now the spells. You can find Dark Orb just after Arthorias in Ula's little township, in one of the houses guarded by the sorcerers that deal absurd amount of damage. The second spell, Dark Beat, is in the abyss just before Manus. I decided to get only the Dark Orb and try see it again. If you have the patience, you should go and get the second spell as well. It took some time to defeat Seath, uh, but the Dark Orb did actually okay damage, so the fight wasn't too long. After my victory with the Scaleless Betrayer, I decided to go for Nito. After you have defeated the Scaleless Betrayer, you can basically choose wherever you want to go, I decided to go for Nito. Just run past all the skellies right in the Pinwheel's dungeon. After walking over Pinwheel, we'll put the Cast Light spell for good use. You don't actually need the cast light spell if you know where to go or know what to do in the Tomb of Giants, but I don't, so I decided to use it. After aimlessly wandering around in the darkness and using all of my Estus flasks, I found my way to the Gravelord's lair. Luckily, I had some humanity in my pocket, so I could heal myself during the fight. Like always, Nito himself wasn't that bad, but the damned skeletons pissed me off. My only salvation was when Nito used his AoE and destroyed the skeletons for a while. Also, the damn toxic Nito inflicted to you with his sword dance was pain in the ass. In the end, after a little bit of struggle, I laid the Gravelord back to rest. Next up would be Four Kings, since I wanted to save the best for the last. Grab two transient curses from this corpse right here, and the ghosts can't stand a chance. To be honest, I never felt this area to be so easy. Fetch the key to the seal, and open the floodgates, and be ready to face the abyss. Now of course, we need the Covenant of Aratorias for us to traverse the abyss. While in the Dark Root Garden, you can go and kill the butterfly. It shouldn't take long. The Great Grey Wolf is also quite easy and fast fight, and that's good for us, because we really wouldn't want to see him suffer. Now to the Abyss. As you all may know, this fight is a true DPS test. Because of our missing firepower, I found this fight to be a little bit challenging. At least I could stay far enough from the king so I could react to his attacks, but new kings spawn way too fast. Using a seal to block their attacks is a valid strategy. I also recommend using first all of your powerful spells to deal as many kings as fast as you can. Even though the fight wasn't the easiest, I still managed to defeat the kings on my first try. At this point I decided that fuck isolate and I went to defeat Priscilla and Gwendolyn. I was too lazy to pick up the ring to get access to Quinnelin's boss fight from Catacombs, so I just killed Quinnever. Okay, to isolate we go. You can always cheese this with this shot if you want, but for some reason I never succeeded in doing that, so I took him 1v1. Although I wouldn't call it a fight, as most of the time I was hiding behind this rock and shooting my soul arrows, but hey, at least I got the job done, right? Now there's only two bosses between me and the Bed of Chaos. The Demon of Fire's Edge and Centipede Demon. Nothing special, since our damage is quite good against them. The run up to Bed of Chaos is always a fucking mystery to me. I never remember where the hell I need to run, and these dino legs are the doom of me. After a good 15 minutes of running around, I finally found the way. 
there's nothing I should really say about the Bed of Chaos. Just platform your way to victory. Back to the DLC. We need to get the Crest Key so that we can battle the Black Dragon Kalamata. Up the stairs and face the Mimic. It should not be too tough. You can also pick up this Dark Box spell if you want to use it. Before facing the Notorious Dragon, go and get the Dark Bead from the Chasm of the Abyss. That is, if you can get there alive. Next, find the Kitty Cat and open the shortcut. Now it's time to face the Calamity. Remember to go to the arena first to trigger the boss fight before you go and cry help from Goth. With these spells and equipment, the fight was stupid long. It took around 15 to 20 minutes per try and 4 tries for me to defeat him. Calamity is fast and he does not give a lot of windows for you to cast spells. I found that it's best to fire your spells when he's breathing fire, and there is three different types of fire breathing attacks when you can cast. The fourth possible fire breathing attack was clearly my doom, every single time. After a long 75 minutes I finally got my victory just to realize that I didn't have my bellowing dragon crest ring equipped. So please, do not make this mistake. Okay, back to the Chasm of the Abyss, where the father is waiting for us. Same as with the dragon, the primeval human does not give many chances to cast spells. After the leap attack, this fist attack and this slam, I found to be the best chances. I actually never struggled to fight with Manus. I think I have just got used to fast-paced bosses through Bloodborne, and in my opinion, Manus is hands down the best boss in Dark Souls, so I really enjoy fighting with him. Now there is only one boss left, and that is, of course, the Lord of Cinder. Because I suck at parrying, Gwyn is a tough fight for me. But not this time. Just use your homing soul mass and Gwyn will be a pushover. And you can happily say that you have beaten Dark Souls by using only sorceries. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.